seriously. And that is why we sat down as a RCM and said, hey, there is a, a gap in this market that we need to come and fill. All of us are teaching these theoretical models very nicely. We are teaching the Modigliani and Miller models in our books. So theoretical frameworks, most of these students are super, but they are practical is one thing. Their practical aspect is one thing. So we are introducing, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, particular practical uh, uh, training course uh, covering basically the major themes. The major areas here are number one, bookkeeping. Bookkeeping. After bookkeeping, we will be able to take you straight away to this concept of what here, financial reporting. Financial reporting. It's after financial reporting, we shall be able to take you through concepts of uh, also tax, especially the tax planning. How do we compute, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, some tax obligations? It will not be all of them. We are not looking at like covering your entire syllabus, no. The core ones, the core ones, and of course, how to file the same in ITAX. And then, of course, it cannot end without us mentioning what year, without us mentioning something to do with audit. Because as an auditor, what you'll do, listen and listen to me very carefully. First of all, as an accountant, you'll prepare your books of accounts very well. Prepare their final accounts, all right? Once you've done their final accounts, you should be able to bind all of them very nicely and pass these to your finance director. Pass the same to your board of directors, for example. So the board of directors will be able to approve. And once they approve this, what do they do? They forward the entire document, in this case, to the auditor. So the auditor, of course, will look at the annual reports. But remember, an auditor, ladies and gentlemen, cannot believe everything that is given there. The very first thing that he will doubt, of course, after he has done his planning and whatever, the very first thing he'll doubt are the financial statements provided. So what the auditor will do is to ask for a TB. So once he's given a TB, he'll be able, of course, ladies and gentlemen, using various software, of course, the very least being Excel, he should be able to come up with uh, the final account himself. And then, of course, it, start, it starts the comparison from there. So many times when our students go to interviews, you know, they are asked in this case here questions revolving around those things, taxation, auditing, financial reporting, bookkeeping, and uh, Simple things such as what here, journal entries. Most of these guys, when they go and they're asked in this case about journal entries, they do not know, for example, even the types of accounts under the golden rules. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, types of accounts, if you can remember, we have what we call personal accounts. We have what we call real accounts. We have what we call, in this case here, nominal accounts. All right? And the moment in this case here, we are able to know those three types of accounts. And uh, of course, we also remember the concept of what, if you can remember here, the concept, let me just get back to charts here, the concept of uh, this thing here, pearls. We call this one the concept of pearls, the concept of pearls, the concept of pearls. If you remember pearls, P-E-A, P-E-A, they always have debit entries whenever they increase. They have debit entries. They have debit entries. And then we have, in this case here now, the RLS. Whenever they increase, they have what you call credit entries. Credit entries. Credit entries. Credit entries. So when you talk of PEA, we are looking at, ladies and gentlemen, purchases. Purchases. We have expenses. We have expenses and assets. And assets. Whenever they increase, in this case here, what do we do? We shall always be debiting them. So if, for example, we have, a, let's talk of a supermarket like Carrefour. If Carrefour today purchased goods for sale, then they'll have to open a purchases account and a debit that purchases account. Because pair tells us to debit purchases, expenses, if they pay commissions, if they pay insurance, they must open what we call an insurance account, and then they do what here they debit. At the same time, should they, for example, go for assets, buildings? Should they, in this case here, go, for example, for uh, motor vehicles, for distribution? Then they'll open what we call a PPE account or a motor vehicle account and debit that account. So whenever we talk of pair, those first three, 
it is purchases, expenses, and assets. Whenever they go up, we debit. And then we have now the RLS. So this RLS, we are looking at revenue. We are looking at revenue. We have, in this case, here liabilities. We have, in this case, here liabilities. We have, in this case, here, ladies and gentlemen, here, share capital and other equities and reserves. Share capital. Share capital. Whenever they increase, what do we do? We credit. So for the last two minutes that I've been speaking, ladies and gentlemen, is there somebody who has been able to master something here? We have two things that I've raised that I would want you to start doing even further research. We have the concept of what here, the types of accounts. I'm telling you, if you come for employment at RCM Online College, or even, for example, in my auditing farm, I run a farm called Aura and Company, which has a composite license. We have a composite license for doing all those uh, advisories, audit, tax, uh, a practitioner, ETC. If you come there and then you tell me that, Mualimu, I don't know the types of accounts for sure, even if it's, uh, I mean, uh, that I know you that I've taught you, it will be quite a, a sad situation. We must be knowing the types of what here, yeah, various accounts. We must be knowing the pearls as a foundation, as a foundation. Now, as a gentleman, from there, of course, you must also understand the full cycle of accounting. Full cycle of accounting, for example, these guys were not keeping any records. If KRA knocks on their door like this today, like they're doing every time KRA nowadays has become very aggressive. If KRA was to come and knock on their door, they'll call you as an accountant. What will you do? First of all, you will tell them we have to collect data. Remember, mostly they have not even been keeping receipts. So when you talk of data collection, you're looking at those many, many things. The invoices, ETC, they collect data. After that, now we go to the second step, which is now what year? Converting this data to journals. We convert the data to journals. So now we are journalizing. We are coming up with our day books. Day books having total, for example, sales for each day, ETC. All right. And these are things that will be able to show you practically when you are doing this practical course with you. All right. So after that, of course, ladies and gentlemen, after I've been able to do all my uh, journals, I've been able to do what we call journalization, journalizing here, then I'll be able to come and now get the totals here. All right. Those totals are the ones that I'll be able to transfer for each. I'll be able to transfer these totals here to now the trial balance to see whether things are balancing because I can never start preparing my annual reports if the trial balance is not mathing. That's a new language for 2023. If the trial balance is not balancing, I cannot straight. If I have anything like suspense account in the trial balance, I can never go straight away to the annual, uh, not annual, but uh, financial statements. All right. Now, after I've done that, then I'll be able to do now, ladies and gentlemen, in this case, here, these financial reports. Once I do the financial reports, I also need to support each item of my financial reports there. It could be sales, it could be cost of sales. All those items, I have to number them so that now I can prepare what we call the notes to the accounts. Because remember, nowadays, you can't have annual reports without notes to the accounts with their explanations, explanatory. You must explain each and every item in your financial statements. Now, as a gentleman, then you will be able to go and bound, uh, bind these particular items, all of them together, together with, of course, uh, uh, a word, a word from management, what we call management commentaries, because the management has to comment. That's why we talk over analysis also being part of the cycle of financial reporting. So management commentary, they have to comment. Tell us in this case here, for example, internal aspects, the figures, sales increased because of this and this. It is, and then they have to look at uh, the external environment. All right, they must look at the external environment. How are they impacted on by inflation? How they, were they impacted on because of these uh, fuel prices? Because of, for example, Russian war, ETC. All right, so management commented. And again, now remember, if it's a listed company, you can't just do things like that. If it's a listed company, you have to prepare what you call sustainability reports. So shall be able to show you in a very practical way how do these sustainability reports look like? How are they prepared? All right? How are they prepared? 
So after now you've prepared this final report, this is where now you'll be able to do what year two, hand over the things to the board, of course. The board is able to approve those results. Of course, at the end of the day, they have, have to get their uh, uh, place at the auditor's office. So then the auditor will start now with his usual uh, uh, things, planning for the audit, risk assessment, all right? The actual auditing now. Is it my network or Dactari's net is misbehaving? My net is very, very nice. My net is very nice. Let me just move slowly. Maybe you accuse me of speaking uh, too fast, but my network is very, very nice. It's very stable, yes. It's very stable, yes. Thanks, Idi. It is very stable. Great. Iko sasawa. Iko sasawa. Maybe ni Catherine anafangalie. Great. So it means, ladies and gentlemen, that we have to really work very hard as accounting students, as accounting scholars, to understand that cycle. Some of us, as we always keep on telling you and you think it's a joke, we keep on changing jobs kind of the way we wish, simply because of our knowledge in this area. All right. For example, and we run very fast. For example, we know that for from 2024 beginning, all listed companies now have an obligation. They have an obligation in this case here to do what here. They have an obligation to prepare what we call sustainability reports. So like now I've really dug into these sustainability reports, waiting to see what 2024 has for me or for us as a and the company uh, uh, CPA, auditing firm. All right. So I believe, and this is something I've observed from my colleagues that uh, I work with, from my fellow, for example, classmates in those old days, there are very few students who are willing to put in the efforts needed to understand the whole cycle. Trust you me, if we have anybody who is running an auditing farm here, they'll tell you that uh, most of these students here are really looking for just putting up, patching up papers. They have master's at ETC. But in terms of, uh, I mean, what is happening down there, nothing. In terms of knowledge, in this case, the knowledge could be something like 20%. Of course, I'm trying to be a little bit what here. I'm trying to be a little bit fair because I'm told there are others who are at Z, zero, but we shall overcome. Now, as a gentleman, I will not teach this course alone. This is quite an intense course. And given its intensity, even the timetable, I know the timetable is showing that we have got uh, very few sessions. No, I was just putting there because I would want this to be a course that students are able to dedicate. You can tell me that Mualimu, for example, now this Saturday and next Saturday, let's have all the practitioners coming on the table. We study, for example, on Saturday from two to maybe six. Sunday, for example, again, two to six. So you can make it like a weekend only program, but ensure that every weekend we are really studying. So that by the time I'm giving you a certificate that you are now fully proficient in terms of practical accountancy, it should be a truthful thing. It should be a truthful thing. So it's going to be quite a, a marathon, but, but before I talk about the timetable, I would want to introduce CPA Job Madede. CPA Job Madede is the audit manager at Aura and Co. So Job Madede, CPA, are you able to unmute yourself? Yes, and if possible, please start your video. If possible, please start your video for these guys to see you clearly. All right, Professor, I hope you can hear me. I can hear you very well, and thanks for uplifting me uh, to a professor position. Thank you so much. But we'd want um, to see you. Are you able to uh, 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 put on to, your I'm trying to camera. put on my video. I'm being told uh, I need okay. to check my settings. Ask to start a video. OK, start if my video. If you're not able to do it, no problem. OK. I don't know why it's not starting. No worries. We can always work with whatever that is available. Okay. But uh, there is somebody who will really be disappointed who is called Dama, a young okay. lady who would have really wished to see you. But we shall All overcome. Right. All is All well. Right. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, as, as you've introduced me, I'm Job Madede. 
I'm an audit manager with Aura and Company. Basically what we do, we do audit, we do tax, we do accountancy. And uh, we've come from the theoretical framework, which most of the people in this meeting are in, and we've been able to enter into the real world of accounting. And that's why we are so happy that uh, uh, we can have such a platform to be able to discuss about the real accounting. Now, outside here in the industry, and that is the accounting industry, the challenge that every employer is having is one. Most of the employers are getting candidates that have papers. It could be become, it could be BBM with CPAK. Some of them are members of the Institute, but unfortunately, the members cannot opportunity have found that the practitioners who are now doing these things in the field tell any other person who is interested what the employer is looking for and what the employer wants these people to be doing when they have been employed as accountants in their companies. Now, there are various levels when one has been employed. You can be an accountant, you can be a finance manager, and you can be a CFO. But until you know what is expected of you, it will be very difficult for you to be able to do what the employer wants. Now, this is the challenge that we are having, where students don't understand the double entry when it comes to employment class, where students do not even understand what is to debit and what is to credit. And that is why we are here today. Now, let me begin by saying this. The world of accounting is divided into many aspects, but I'll be able to simplify into three. Number one, for you to be an effective accountant, then one, you must have the theoretical understanding of accounting. You must have an understanding of double entry as per the theory of Lucas Paciola. You must know why we debit receivables and we credit our revenue. You must know why we debit our fixed assets and we credit bank. What I mean is this, until a student is able to understand what happens when our revenue, what happens when our fixed asset increases, accountant. And that's why we go to RCM, first of all, to arm ourselves with the theoretical knowledge. Once we have the theoretical knowledge, now we look for employment at workplaces, then what is expected of us is to put this theoretical knowledge into practicals. So what is required is as an accountant, you must be able to understand the double entry. Number two, as a student, you must be able to understand financial, national financial reporting standards. The reason why I'm saying this is that for you to move from the level of, be of being an accountant to the level of being a finance manager and a CFO, you must graduate from the level of double entry and now arm yourself with what, with what we call international financial reporting standards. The number three thing that is expected out of you is that you must be able to arm yourself with the tax knowledge. The three will be able to make you to be a complete accountant. Now, as accounting has evolved, accounting starts from the manual point of view, where one can be able to get employment, 
and you're supposed to do your accounting in Excel. So you need to prepare spreadsheets for sales, spreadsheets for purchases, spreadsheets for fixed assets, and look for a way you can put them together into coming up with a trial balance. That is what you normally call the manual way of being an accountant. But now, people have moved away from that. People have gone automation. And so because people have moved away from the manual of operation, because one, it is tedious, two, it is not safe, you can lose data, and three, it is not accurate, then it becomes better if you can move from the manual operation to doing things in the automated way. Doing things in the automated way is where one is allowed to use accounting system. For example, using QuickBooks, for example, using Tally, for example, using Sage, or for example, using Pastel. Now, in this meeting today, I will be able to use two approaches to explain to people how it's done. Number one, I will use QuickBooks and number Number two, I will use Tally. And use, there is one thing that he needs to understand the nature of the employer. And that is a big challenge. This is what I mean. If you are employed by Carry4, then you need to understand that this is a supermarket. You need to understand that they have inventory. You need to understand that they do not manufacture anything. But if you are employed with Aura and Co, then you need to understand that Aura and company provide services. They do not have stocks. And this is a challenge with most of the accountants where accountants get employed, but they do not know what to do. Why? Because they do not understand whoever has employed them what he is dealing with. Now, if you have been employed with our and company, you know that our and company is dealing in provision of services. It's upon you as an accountant to ask yourself a question. Do they manufacture anything? What do I expect to meet? Do I expect to meet inventory? Do I expect to meet fixed asset? Then how do I build up this company myself? What I mean is you are expected to come up with an income statement and a balance sheet. Combine the two to come up with a trial balance. How will you do that if you do not understand how Carrefour operates? How will you understand that if you do not understand how Aura and Co operates? How will you do this if you do not understand how Safaricom operates, if at all you have been employed with Safaricom? So as an accountant, number one principle, you must understand what the employer requires you to do. After you have understood, then one thing you need to eliminate, eliminate the approach. That means you are going to use an accounting system. So if an employer has brought you on board, he will either tell you we are using tally, or we are using QuickBooks. Now, if he's using, for example, he's using Tally, you are expected as an accountant to understand how does Tally operate? And I can give, for example, some principles, basic principles with Tally. You cannot sell what you have not bought. So that tells you that if you are dealing with it, call. If at, all, if at all they are dealing with inventory. But if they are not dealing with inventory, then you need to understand that it will be easier for you to handle because you will only bring in direct costs. But if you are dealing with inventory, then you need to understand that you must first book in the sales. After you have booked in the sales, that is when you will be able to sell. Now, when you sell, the only thing that you need to watch, you need to watch your income statement. You need to watch your sales against your cost of sales 
and against your expenses. At the end of the day, you will come up with the income statement. And in your balance sheet, you will have also elements to do with receivables and payables. What you will miss, you will miss everything that deals with fixed asset. Now, one thing that you need to understand with the tally is that the tally does, does obey the general entry principle and it also obeys the invoicing principle. So that means when you are selling, you can be able to raise invoice. When you are passing expenses, you can be able to do it using journal entry. That is tally. What happens when you are dealing with QuickBooks? It could be QuickBooks desktop or it could be QuickBooks online. Same principle is used. And that's why at RCM now, we, they have brought these softwares on board so that when you do tally and you understand in details, you do QuickBooks, desktop and online, you understand in details. By the time we reach Pastel or Sage, you have understood the principle behind accounting softwares. So once you master the principle behind accounting softwares, then it tells you that when you meet some system, you do not need to be taught. You only system and you can navigate around using the principles that an accountant. As an accountant, double entry. This double accounting system, but that is not enough. Double entry, after system, you are not a... See, Pia Madede, sorry if I, may, if I may interject a little bit, you are really breaking. Is it possible that you check uh, up something? I'm breaking. Yeah, too much, yes. I'm breaking? Yeah, too much. Okay. Just check whether you can Mr. change speed? a few things. Not reduce the speed. You're really breaking because of internet. Okay. Say one to us. I check my internet. No problem. Okay. So great. Great. So I believe even in that uh, kind of uh, poor circumstance uh, in terms of uh, internet connectivity, CPA Job Madeda has been able to put across very, very strong points here. Very, very strong points. I see a video, for example. <laughs> very crucial, yes. Very crucial points, very crucial points. Karibu wa Rashida Pasta, Tudia Tari. Okay. So are you are you ready to continue or have you changed anything? Yes, let me let me say one too, but if okay. I break, you will you will tell me. No problem, right. Okay. So I was at a point where I was saying, the moment a student has understood the voluntary from CPA, and now he has been employed as an accountant, posting this double entry into Sage, Pastel, QuickBooks, Sun System, Tally, it is not enough. Why? 90% of the employers will be on board. Their main interest is tax. They bring you board. Their main interest is tax. You can post some, but get tax wrongly, you will be fired. And that's why at RCM now, we build holistic accountants. How do you compute tax? How do you post this tax into the system? How do you make sure that the compliance as tax is concerned is 101 two things. Number one, double entry knowledge into automated system and tax. You are not a finance manager. Why? You can have you can separate your trial balance into an income statement and the balance sheet, that is okay. But you can... So when we are building accountants, we normally tell them, number one, don't bother so much with reporting. 
Why? Because reporting is built from what you have fed into the system. Concentrate on double entry well fed into the automated system, combine it with proper tax that is automated into the system. You are safe as number one. Like in CalClass, we were doing the first derivative and the second derivative. So to become an accountant, we are looking for the first derivative. You are safe. But if we are to look for an optima, a maxima and or minima, and in this case now maxima, so we are looking for a finance manager, then IFRSs come on board. So when I say IFRSs come on board, you can realize I have not disconnected the accountant from the theory in class. Why? Because IFRS 16 was taught in CPA. IS 16 was taught in CPA. IFRS 1 was taught in CPA. So the theory that we got in class now comes on board when we are building finance managers because at the level of being a finance manager, you must be good in reporting. Now, reporting, reporting has two aspects. We have reporting even at an accountant level and we have reporting at a finance manager level. Some things that confuse accountants is when you are told to prepare financial statements and when you are told to prepare management accounts and this messes up people. Don't bother about what is needed. I always emphasize. We are looking for accountants who can sit down self post into the accounting automated software and give me a doesn't know what I-16 is. When I tell him that I'm paying this secretary 25,000, he can be able to tell me, Mr. Employer, this is how much it will be for pay as you earn, that I will be able to pay on ninth of every subsequent month. This is how much I'll pay as NSS. NHIF, this is how much I will pay as housing levy. And then when I tell him that this is just but a consultant who is doing this assignment for me, which is a consultancy, he will tell me, Mr. Employer, I know that when I was in RCM doing tax, I was told I only need to withhold 5% and I pay as final tax. That is what we are looking for in the industry, friends. So how does this come up? Some of these things might not be in class. Some of the employers do not have time to train. Now, ask the people who are in the field, those who have played Champions League to finals. Now we can come back and hold people's hands and tell them, this is what you need to do practically. So when we put you on tally and we tell you this is tally, we start from the basics. We tell you this is how an invoice is raised in tally. And there is a difference between an invoice and a sales receipt. And the reason is because one is attracted to credit sales and another one is attracted to cash sale. And this is how it is treated. So that we build your stamina in accounting. What we do, we will be offering practical approach. Way when you have left and you meet quick and we, you, we do not the, what, you know the DNA of race. And you're about to give me a balance sheet. Now, when we move you from this, once we are done with you, as the practical approach of double entry being embedded in the automated software, you are an accountant. We only check tax. We only check tax. How good are you? We don't deal with complex tax. We'll be dealing with the most basic tax, which is around four. We will require you to know, but we only do 40. For an account. And when we check, we'll tell you, you are ready for the industry. Do it. Tell them that RCM graduated as an accountant, the role of a finance manager, 
And that's why in this, all confidence that we have so many people who call themselves finance managers in this meeting who actually are not even accountants. Why? They hold title, but they do not have hold knowledge. They do not hold influence. When it reaches the point of a finance manager, you graduated. You graduated from the basics. You now deal with reporting. The only thing you need, you're dealing with, is a trial balance. You are telling people, give me the trial balance. When they give you the trial balance, you tell them, separate for me this trial balance into an income statement and a balance sheet. You are able to look at the cross profit margins and advise the director whether he's dealing in losses or not. You are able to look at the expenses and ask yourself, is he in profits or not? You are able to look at the loans and ask and tell your employer, is he highly geared or not? You are able to look at the balance sheet and ask yourself, are we properly structured or not? Between equity and debt. That is when we are dealing with a finance manager. So at the level of the finance manager, we are dealing with IFRSs. We are dealing with reporting. We are dealing with the deeper staffs of finance, what we call corporate finance. At that point, you are able to advise your employer, but you are not a CFO. The point of, we'll discuss at another level, but at this point, I will then get ready for an audit. And 99% of the account that what they give their auditors to do audit is the trial balance. Once you give your auditor the tri trial balance to do an audit, then know that you are just an accountant. You are not a finance manager. A finance manager, you must be able to give your auditor management reports. When I mean management reports, I mean financial statement that responsibility, the director's report. and the three, but they have the income statement, they have the balance sheet, and of changes in equity, and they have notes and policies in such a manner. Okay, sorry, Job, CPA Job, public. just a moment. I can see guys are complaining that uh, it's really breaking that they can't understand, but I, I believe the, this guy we are able to get him. If guys were to relax and listen keenly. I believe something is really coming up. I don't know whether it's from my end. Yes, of course, I know he's uh, breaking up. I know he's breaking up. But if you guys were to relax a little bit, I'm so sure we, we are getting something. It's only that people don't want to relax. Because now the is other option, because, because, because the guy is not in the country at the moment, so perhaps we end it there. And then, of course... Uh, because I can see guys who are really interested, or rather who are uh, just on the breaking back, but I'm able to get quite subtle things from his discussion. Maybe we could give him like, uh, uh, say, 10 minutes, and then he summarizes. He summarizes, because I, I believe I'm able to get a few things here and there. There is nothing I don't think, uh, I, I mean, I mean that uh, he has said that I don't think I can't explain. So I wish people would just relax a little bit, people to get off the chatting sec section for like five minutes only. Okay, Prof. Allow me summarize in around. Yes. I think I had shot a place where I was talking about being a finance manager. Mm -hmm. Never give an auditor a trial balance. Give him your set of management reports. And your set of management reports is a report that has an income statement, a balance sheet, a statement of changes in equity, cash flow statement, notes and policies. Whatever is missing are only three things. Statement of director's responsibility, director's report, and the auditor's opinion. And you give the auditor what has been discussed by the board or your employer. Some of us are employed by one director. Some of us are employed by two directors. 
sit your bosses down to discuss with them the figures way before you give to the auditors. That is what makes the audit process to start. Now, I want to apologize if there is a network problem from my end because I think some people have not been getting me well. But when everything will be fixed, we'll be able to get ambo time so that we go procedurally one step to the other, practically doing it so that we do not need to be employed for us to be armed. We can easily know these things so that when we go to the interview, we are as good as someone who has three years, four years work experience. Thank you so much. All right. Can we give a round of applause to this young man, CP accountant? Are you able to see where we can clap for this great man? He's an orator. I taught this guy in 20, what is it, 05? I think it must have been 005, long time ago. Yeah, and he has worked for these big, big farms, audit farms. And then when, of course, I started Daura and Co, I mean, I thought of, uh, why can't I coach him up? And then we get to work together. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Quite informative. Quite informative. So the question is, will you guys now be able to join our practical? You know, when you talk of practical accountancy, people do not really appreciate what we mean by this practical accountancy. From that explanation, and now that uh, CPM Adede will be the lead trainer, Will you guys be joining? We have only 50 students, and this is a session that uh, should take more than, that should have more than 200 students. <laughs> well, today, today, today is the first class. This is the introduction. This is actually the introduction. This is the introduction. This is the introduction. And you can imagine what we are uh, basically charging you guys. You'll be surprised. What we, what we charge you guys is quite modest. It's quite uh, modest. It's quite modest. How I wish all of us would really join this. And then we get to work uh, things out together. RCM students, of course, ladies and gentlemen, they have an offer. What is the offer? They get a discount of 1,000. They get a discount of 1,000, Bob they get a discount of 1,000, Bob. Out of the 4,000, these guys will pay 3,000. These guys will pay 3,000. And remember, with that amount, we shall be able to give you access to the training environment of Tali, QuickBooks, all right, and Sage. Because you're going to teach this thing in a way that, uh, at the end of the day, we are doing it manually, all right, manually, debit credit, so once I take you through the manual approach, then I'll be able to extract a trial balance, all right? And then, of course, after that, I'll be able to show you manually how do you prepare. Using the same question now, CPM Adede will be able to take you through the computerized environment. It'll be able to take you through the annual reporting system, all right? After that, again, CPM Adede will be able to take you through auditing. How do you select samples using caseware? And using, in this case here, for example, other audit software. All right. And then, of course, the uh, issues of IFRS, we shall be assisting uh, one another to deliver this uh, most important uh, course to you. The most important thing, ladies and gentlemen, will be the fact that by the end of the sessions, which in this case here should amount to 32 hours in total, and you must figure out, I'm so sure guys are still in the relaxation mood of what year December, but we have to put that aside. We are here this month to study. I don't want that situation where people keep on blaming CPA. C CPA is a science. CPA is a big course. Ladies and gentlemen, like myself, for those of you who know uh, my background, I'm a civil engineer. I'm an accountant by profession and a civil engineer by mistake. All right? But if there is any course that I'm so proud about is accounting. With accounting, and you happen to be having discipline and, of course, knowledge in this area, ladies and gentlemen, will keep on changing jobs the way you wish, and you'll be getting good, good jobs, all right? 
the biggest problem that we have, uh, ladies and gentlemen, very many people don't want to put in the effort. Even after taking some of you through this practical training, again, most of you will forget the course within a month. You'll ask them in this case here after, after a month, how do we handle this? And the IFRS 16 leases. Again, you realize they know nothing. Ask them about, for example, IFRS 17 insurance uh, contracts. Again, you realize they know nothing. All right. So what we would want to do is to give you a base. But of course, after giving you a base, you also have some work to do. There is some digging to be done. There is some digging to be done. There is some digging to be done. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to really get out of the box. Like today, when I was teaching, you know, I teach coding classes, coding classes for kids, beginners as well. And of course, for accountants, I'll be teaching you the Python ETC. Somebody was asking me, Walimo, how comes you know very uh, a lot of stuff? It's because of uh, the digging aspect. Every other day I'm learning. Of course, I have uh, a privilege of working with a software company, but uh, there are so many guys who are working in that software company who are ideally will be knowing quite little because of what you're there, specialization aspect. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Not unless there is uh, somebody who has a uh, very, very serious uh, questions here. Uh, I would expect all these 281 students here to join. Ah, there is something small that I have to show you, which we are doing, which we are doing with CPM Adede. Let me just pull this here. Let me just pull this, it's very important. I can't just go without showing you what you're doing here. This is very important. All right, just a minute. I'll be able to get this. All right, now it's coming now. Great. Great, great, great. Okay, so I can see very many require uh, many many questions here, like requirements to join the course. This is purely an online course. I've seen also somebody asking about physical classes. No, we are preparing accountants who are work ready. And one of the requirements, ladies and gentlemen, that you're supposed to be having, of course, is the online, knowing how to work online. All right. So knowing how to use this, uh, for example, Zoom, sharing screen, ETC. I mean, like today, we have 250 students who are doing advanced Excel with us online, online, and they're not complaining. So this thing of really wanting to come and stay with somebody physically is neither here nor there. I mean, how much will you be able to pay us to sit down with you? It will be very wasteful. We are able to charge these little fees because of what economies of scale. But if, for example, to get like one or two students who come to the office, then it'll be very expensive. Economies of scale. And of course, the fact that these videos are being recorded and given to you in a good time, then you should be happy to study online. So the course requirements, you need in this case here, a laptop. You must invest in a laptop. That is very, very important. This thing of coming to do practical accountancy using, uh, in this case here, a phone, as much as you would want your fees, that should not be the way to go. You should have a laptop because some of the computations, like taxation computations, would want to do them in Excel. So we'd want you to have a laptop. Laptops are very, very cheap. Nowadays, 20,000 at least, you'll be able to get a good laptop, really. Okay, so I move on very fast. How long does it take? It's 32 hours in total. So these 32 hours, if students in this case were to be very aggressive, one or two weekdays, and of course, uh, a few days over the weekend, we should be able to clear this thing before 1st of January, before 1st of January. And of course, I'm aware that some of you will have to be forced to work with videos because there are those students who can't be found, for example, on Saturday because of religion. 
which is very good. But you see with the videos and Mwalimu is there for any questions, we should be able to address your issues here really. All right. So that's something we shall be able to agree in the group because we must put in more time. We must put in more time. All right. When already we have begun, certificates will be issued, yes. Those ones will be issued, yes. Interested in understanding issues to do with management reports, yes. George, that we should be able to help you join the course. Must I be a finalist to take the course? No. You just need to have done, say, like part one or financial accounting. Financial accounting, remember, ladies and gentlemen, even most of the things that you need for financial reporting are those things that you did in financial accounting and, of course, some basics of IFRS. ETC. So if you are a part one, then you qualify straight away. You qualify straight away. Yes, I'll bring you those who are practicing. I'll bring you those who are practicing. Like in our job, my daddy will be the lead trainer, will be the lead trainer, will be the lead trainer of the course. Sustainability report, ni ile integrated reports, or is it different? Ni same. Same. Of course, integrated report, or we are looking at uh, putting together, we have the financial statements. Now then we have the other, the ESG, ESG environment, social and governance reports. When you put them together, we call that an integrated report. All right. Otherwise, the sustainability alone, it is a ESG, ESG. Great. You guys have good questions here. As much as interested in knowing accounting cycle and management reporting, I'm much interested. Thank you. Great. So the particular accounting class is different from Yes, it is different from advanced Excel. It's different from advanced Excel, Faith. I don't know whether you made a mistake. We can allow you to change. And of course, we can allow you, maybe what we can do is to discuss with the students who are doing advanced Excel and other courses. If they're also interested with this practical accounting, how much they add to join this practical accounting? Because I believe you need all these courses. All right. So in this case here, before they start disappearing, then I need to go back to my email to show them something small here. So we have here Gmail. We shall overcome, we shall overcome. How comes this thing is not sending? So meanwhile, I'll continue addressing your questions. Keep them coming. Keep them coming before this thing comes. All right. Yes, tell us how much you can add. I will have to liaise with our CFO to do the mathematics. Let me not commit here, but I'll be able to make announcements by the end of uh, today. Vitalis can't be 500 years. Yes, that, that I'll be able to do. That I'll be able to do. That I'll be able to do. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Okay, so I'll take this opportunity uh, because this thing, I don't know what is happening with Gmail. It's not coming through. It could be my phone or something. We seem to be having challenges today. So basically, at our and company, what do we do? Those guys who are asking for internships, it'll be very important for you to know what we do at our and company. So we have auditing and assurance. And the auditing and assurance, we have external and statutory audit. We have internal audit, forensic audit, we have information system audit, risk, risk assurance services, government and the public sector consulting. We also have actuarial services. Taxation number two, annual tax compliance. We have the tax health checks. We have the tax planning. We have the transfer pricing. So many companies, ladies and gentlemen, currently have got issues to do with KRA simply because they are multinational. They're having their staff in Kenya here who are doing, in this case here, jobs for customers who are based abroad. So at the end of the day, most of these governments here would want fair share of revenues. So the revenue, international revenue, has to be shared, has to come. 
Kenya government would want a tax out of that. So then we can easily, in this case here, craft for you a transfer price policy, a transfer price policy, a transfer price policy. What else do we do? Number three, we have the general advisory services. And advisory services, we do bookkeeping and accountancy, payroll management, training and capacity building, like training, like just the other time, was it last month? We had uh, Ushuru Sako staff. We took them through some great trainings on financial, reporting, and automation, among other companies. We have here business evaluation. Business evaluation, we are quite key. Currently, we are valuing some businesses practically. Restructuring of corporates, if you have got uh, financial issues and you would want uh, us to come in and uh, look at your restructuring, that's an area we can really help you. We have preparation of due diligence reports. And of course, we have the business registration services. If you would want to register a company, ETC, we can easily help you there. You know, there are people who will simply come and uh, ask for business registration. But I want you to register for me a company. And of course, you'll get some people will go very cheaply and register that company for you, all right? Without looking at so many, many other things. Like now there are so many guys here who are not even doing their annual uh, returns to the registrar of companies. The only thing that the returns are supposed to be done to who? They're supposed to be done to KRA. There is a lot of misinformation. And when some of these small, small things catch up, you realize that uh, because they lack, they lack what we call the CS services, Certified Public Secretary of Services, those companies, they, they come to pay a very big price. Like currently I have somebody who is being in this case squeezed by NITA. This guy has not been remitting any NITA deductions, all right, for so many years. So you get like, now nah, NITA cannot forgive you. NITA you'll have to pay at the end of the day, all right? So small, small things are like, for example, when you change the head office, not even head office, when you change offices, you move from, for example, Stand Bank House, you take, in this case, your office to another building, all right? Do you know that you have a responsibility of informing KRA, a responsibility of informing the register of companies? If you don't do it, there is a penalty, and the penalty is crazy, all right? And those guys are very, very, very wise. When they come and find you in a new office, they'll ask you, ah, what happened to the other? So come and check us in the office. Next time when you get an email for not, having notified us that you changed your offices, this is the penalty. Again, you find yourself in problems. So there is quite a lot that you need to understand about the business structure, about the business structures here. Very important as you get into advisory services, as you get into advisory services. All right. Then we have what we call the transaction services. Transaction services, for example, you want to acquire a business. Also for purposes of business evaluation. Then it will be very important for you to engage us. We call that business acquisition. We have business diversifications. Before you diversify, before you diversify, it will be very important for you to get in touch with who? With a business professional. Come to our own company, we shall be able to sort you. Then, of course, we have uh, business strategic alliances and the global capital markets, global capital markets. So these are great things. Would wish uh, in the future they are quite uh, intense. In the future, if all of us can understand like most of the things that are here, then I'm 100% sure that you guys will succeed outside there. But of course, we can't promise what we are offering to train you on what we are offering 100%. But we shall ensure that by the time this course comes to an end, all of us will be somewhere. So ladies and gentlemen, not unless there is anybody who has a, a burning question, I would want us to call this to an end, and I would want to take this opportunity to thank you so much, Job Madede, for a job well done. So I think this guy should get a partnership at our and company, isn't it? I, I like when I see my students who are able to rise that fast. That's very good. That's very good. That's very good. That should. That's very good. That's very good. That's very good. Very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. Make him a partner, very good. So ladies and gentlemen, please, if you'd want to get uh, in touch with us, don't forget to call us at 0719-525,000. 0719-525,000. Mary Kisui is saying that uh, if I 
bring him on board as a partner, you can close so many businesses. So you can see the kind of uh, <laughs> very informative forum. Thank you so much. And of course, I'm also very happy that I called you within a very short time. You were able to respond. You were able to respond. How much do you charge for a group uh, uh, a training? Is it possible for you to make that inquiry through our number? Make that inquiry through our number, and then we shall be able to give you a quotation. Start date already. The, the, this was the first day. This was the first day. Day. Next day will be on Saturday, but again, we are going to look at that timetable. You guys must create time. That thing of saying that, Mualimu, we don't want this and this. No. We must, in this case here, create time. And you are counting. Yes, we are good. Repeat the number, 0719. 525,000. 0719, 525,000. Advanced Excel, you may answer, Advanced Excel, you may already. You may phone the already. You know, students of uh, accounting will keep on telling you that they know a lot. But trust you me, in most cases, they do not know many things. They, they keep on complaining, but in most cases, they, like now, this is what we have been able to do in our Excel. In our Excel classes, this is what we have been able to do in our Excel classes. Sophia, allow me to mute your video. Okay. So in Excel, so like now you get this kind of data. If I come, ladies and gentlemen, here, if I come here, if I look at this, if I say control shift, you will see this is data that goes all the way up to 15,121 rows. This is what we call big data. So with the big data, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd want to really appreciate this and be able to even share it, with your directors, with your, in this case, your shareholders of the company to explain to them how the business is performing, then you will need to pivot. How do you pivot? It's very easy. Come and say control shift, highlight all the columns at the top. Control shift, I'm able to go down and I've been able to highlight everything. Then I'm able to insert, insert what we call a pivot table. So this pivot table, of course, yeah, I don't even have to read anything about this pop-up window if I've done proper highlighting. I just need to come and say, okay, there. Once I say, okay, there, I'm able to see my canvas and I'm able to see my pivot fields, which are normally four. So like now the year, or rather I will come first of all and take what I would want to pivot. The one that I would want to pivot, ladies and gentlemen, is the volume. So this volume, I'll come and put it here. It is saying count of volume and it's counting number of rows you can see here. I don't want count of volumes. I would want to come here and use this drop down menu. I'm, I'm moving quite fast because of what I'm just doing a demonstration. So I'll be able to say value fields. So these value fields, I'll be able to go to summation. So once I say, okay, I'm able to see the total volume is that 2 million and something. So I would want to break this down to pivot it. I would want to pivot this. So to pivot this, I'll come and take this here to columns. So now I'm able to subdivide the entire 2 million and something into the various years. I can come and pivot this, subdivide it further using the products. So I'll take the product like that. So you can see now here that entire table of 15,000 uh, uh, rows, it has been just condensed to 21 rows, the 217 there. And now this makes sense. This makes lots of sense, ladies and gentlemen, because you can see now alcohol, I can follow through, I can track. So if I were you, I would combine this advanced Excel that we are teaching you guys with the practical accountancy. There's a lot of value there. There's a lot of value there. You can't tell me as an accountant that you're doing uh, really financial reporting, ladies and gentlemen, without this knowledge. I mean, this is knowledge that you need. It's knowledge that you need. And you're lucky that you're giving you this kind of knowledge at some kind of uh, low prices. I mean, people outside here will charge exorbitant fees. And yet they are not teaching you Excel for accountants. This is an accountant teaching fellow accountants. You guys are only lucky because you are able to do what here. We are able. How much do we charge Excel? How much do we charge for Excel? Omondi, are you able to tell us uh, exactly? No, you are. No, you are not late, Kevin at all. You are not late, Kevin at all. We have just begun. We have just begun. We have just begun. You are not late, and we record all classes. We record all classes. We record all classes. So Excel is 3,000. You can see the Excel is 3,000. Excel is 3,000. Like that. Excel is 3,000. Those inquiries, please target them to our number. Can we end the meeting now? Can we end the meeting now? Can we end the meeting now? I think we have done quite well. I think you have done quite well. Uh, 
RCM students, do you have a discount for them? We continue with Excel. There's so much to do in Excel, but also this was a high level kind of meeting. Yes, when you pay for that Excel, when you pay for that Excel, we teach you that advanced Excel and the Power BI, the Power Business Intelligence for free. So you'll be able to do those uh, good graphs, dashboards, ETC like that. Would want our prayer is that once you get outside there, people should be able to say, hey, RCM did something nice to mold you people. The top up here, Kelly, I'll be able to announce the top up immediately after this. And then I can see people talking about exams. Th this thing is not really about exams per se. It's about us giving you like uh, some practical situation to handle, like a project. We tell you in this case here, this is the trial balance. Go and work out to give us an income statement, give us a cash flow statement like that. We can't call it really a, like an exam. I mean, we can't have Kasneb hammering you from the head and then we hammer you from the feet. You will annihilate you. Yeah. If we call them exams, it, it will be quite unfortunate, really. We don't want to call them exams. These are practical things. So at the end of the day, you shall be given a project, which you should be able to go and do at your own time, and then you deliver. But of course, you must do the project for you to get a certificate, yes. Let's leave exams to Kasneb. We can't really beat you like that, no. Let's leave. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Of course, as usual, as your father, much love from your father. Thank you so much and good night. Bye.